Hello photographers, my name is Spiros Heniatis and this is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. Today's video is a bonus video to go along with my Pentax K3 hands-on review. And in this video I'm going to be talking about the anti-aliasing filter simulator that Ricoh included on the Pentax K3. Before I talk about the filter itself though, I need to talk about a couple of other things. First, up until recently all digital cameras had what's called an optical low-pass filter, which is also also referred to as an anti-aliasing filter. The reason for this filter is that in digital imaging, when you photograph a subject that has fine patterning in it, the resulting image can exhibit something that's called moray. And I might be saying that wrong. Correct me down in the comments if you want to. An example of the kind of patterns that can cause moray include things like Venetian blinds or vertical or horizontal repeating lines in architecture, fine weaves and fabric, or stripes and lines and patterns on fabrics and clothes. And moray looks like like this. See how in the center all of the lines are kind of woven together and there's some odd patterns and also notice how between the bands you can see some colors that actually aren't there. That's what we call moire. And without an optical low pass filter you're going to get a lot of that moire whenever you photograph anything that has that kind of pattern on it. And generally speaking we as photographers don't like patterns and colors in our images that are not supposed to be there. So up until very recently every camera had an optical optical low pass filter on it to eliminate the occurrence of moire when photographing subjects that had patterns that could create moire. Now what an optical low pass filter actually does is pretty simple. There's a lot of math involved in it, but the bottom line is that an optical low pass filter ever so slightly makes your image less sharp. And that little bit of blur just kind of taking the edge off the sharpness is enough to eliminate moire patterns in an image. The problem with an optical low pass filter is that it blurs every image that you take with the camera whether your subject exhibits a moray pattern or not. And in fact, moray patterns do not naturally occur in nature. This means that landscape and nature photographers that have been using digital cameras were losing image sharpness without gaining anything. Now, as I mentioned recently, camera manufacturers have started leaving off these optical low-pass filters. The idea behind that being that we as photographers care more about sharpness than we do about moray patterns. But the problem with not having an optical low-pass filter is if you do care about moray patterns and don't want them in your photos and you buy a camera that does not have an optical low pass filter, you're out of luck. You're going to get more if you're photographing a subject that has patterning in it. Now what Rico did with the Pentax K5 II and 2S is they created two identical cameras with one significant difference. The K5 II has an optical low pass filter on the image sensor and the K5 2S does not have an optical low pass filter on the imaging sensor. So two identical cameras gave a photographer a choice. Do I want ultimate sharpness or do I want elimination of moray? But with the Pentax K3, Rico took it a step further and they invented the anti-aliasing filter simulator. And this is a revolutionary thing. This is the first ever anti-aliasing filter simulator and they put it on the K3 and what this allows you to do is turn on or off the moray reduction that you traditionally get with an optical low pass filter. This works via the in-camera image stabilization shake reduction system. Now generally speaking, speaking, shake reduction or image stabilization works on the shock absorber principle. For instance, when you're driving a car and you go over a bump, the shock absorbers which work in the car with springs and hydraulics allow the tire to move up over the bump while the car stays relatively stationary as it's moving. In Pentax DSLRs with shake reduction, the shock absorber system is an electromagnetic suspension of the imaging sensor. When this is activated, it keeps the imaging sensor stable while the camera moves around it stabilizing your shot and making it sharper, even though the camera might be shaking. What Rico realized is that you could use that system in reverse. Instead of using the electromagnetic system to keep the sensor stabilized, what you could do is use the electromagnetic system to induce tiny vibrations into the sensor while you're taking a photograph. And those tiny vibrations of the sensor will ever so slightly blur the image, resulting in reduction or elimination of moray patterns. So you get the reduction of an optical low pass filter without an optical low pass filter. And the awesome thing about this, as I said earlier, is that you can turn it on and off. So you have the choice between ultimate sharpness or moray reduction, depending on the subject that you're shooting. So now that we know how it works, let's take a look at how well it works. And before I get into this, I just want to point out that under normal shooting conditions for me, I did not have moray patterns showing up in my photos. And I had the filter off most of the time. This includes sometimes shooting 
using studio subjects that were wearing clothes with patterns that could induce moray. And this was really nice to see with the K3. Now the anti-aliasing filter on the Pentax K3 actually has two settings. You have level one and level two. And level one uses a less intense vibration and level two uses a more intense vibration. So you actually have two different options for how much vibration and how much moray reduction you are going to have. And to test the moray, since I couldn't induce it in my normal shooting, what I did is print a target and hang it on the wall and I did some test shots of the target. And with this target, I was frankly expecting to see moray right away. Now the first shot, the camera was about a foot or so away from the subject, as you can see in this original shot here. And this shot is with the AA filter turned off. And when you look at it, optically you can see a moray pattern because our eyes are getting fooled. But the fact that you can see a moray pattern doesn't mean that one actually exists. When we zoom into 100% on the center of this image, you can see the details in the lines of this pattern and you can see that there's no moray. So without any moray present in this first test with the camera about a foot away from the subject, there was no moray reduction between the first, second, and third shots. And interestingly, I also didn't see a reduction in sharpness between the first, second, and third shots. I expected a little bit of blurring in the second and third shots with the filter turned on and I did not see that. That I thought was very nice. So in order to induce moray, I had to move the camera back away from the subject. And I actually had to go back almost 20 feet before moray started to show up. So here's the shot with the anti-aliasing filter turned off. And there is definitely a moray pattern in this image. And when it's zoomed out, the whole target looks like a moray pattern. But again, that's visually, that's how we see it. When we zoom into 100%, we can see that the lines on the edge of the circle and moving towards the center of the target, those are resolved very well. But in the center, there are false colors and patterns from moray. Now this shot right here is with the anti-aliasing filter set to level one. And I definitely notice a reduction in the moray. It's not completely eliminated as you can see at 100% here, but when you compare the images side by side, there is definitely a reduction in the moray. This final shot here is with the anti-aliasing filter set to level two, and it has completely eliminated the moray, as you can see when we zoom in again to 100%. And when we zoom in and compare it side by side with the first shot, the difference is absolutely clear. So this anti-aliasing filter simulator that Ricoh has invented works, which is amazing to me because now as a photographer, we have even more control over our cameras and how our photos are going to look. And I love that. Now there are a couple of things you need to know about the anti-aliasing filter. First is that the filter is only good up to about one one thousandth of a second for your shutter speed. And the reason for that is that one one thousandth of a second or faster shutter speeds, the shutter is going to open and close faster than the sensor is actually vibrating. So the sensor won't have enough time to vibrate and blur the image before the image is done being recorded. And the same thing applies when using flash photography. Now with flash photography, you'll be using a shutter speed that will allow for the filter to work, but the duration of the flash is so quick that there won't be light to be recorded when the filter is vibrating. So even though the shutter speed will be slow enough, there won't be enough light to record all of the vibration of the sensor. All in all, I think this is an amazing technological advance and I give Ricoh a ton of credit for coming up with this and implementing it so well. And I look forward to seeing this on more cameras and I look forward to seeing the technology evolve as Rico continues to work on it and improve it. All right guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the anti-aliasing filter simulator, let me know down in the comments. And while you're down there, let me know if your camera has an optical low pass filter. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you really like this video, why don't you do me a favor and share it with your friends. But most importantly, why don't you get out there and take some damn photos and I'll see you later. You think this will work as an anti-aliasing filter?